Hi, this is Ranger Mara at Shenandoah National Park and welcome to our celebration of wildflowers. We have a variety of things that we're doing this year, mostly virtual, so we're glad that you're able to join us, even if you're not right here in the park. We have some hikes that you can go on that we're going to show you some wildflowers on, wildflowers as they bloom, and uh, talk about our spring wildflowers. And it's important because we're a national park that all of our wildflowers stay where they are. So what's a good way to have wildflowers without picking them? And one of those ways is to observe them and either take photos or to make artwork out of them. So we have a series of programs with our local watercolor artist, Betty Gatewood. And her first program is going to be about just what parts of a flower there are. So you can understand what makes up a flower before you try to draw it or paint it or use some other kind of artwork to show it. So the first in a series of four episodes will be what makes up a flower. So enjoy this episode and stay tuned for the second one, which will talk about materials that you can use to render your flower. Hello from Shandoah National Park. I'm welcoming you here to uh, learn a little bit about botanical art. You've got to really enjoy what you do. Don't take it as an assignment. But you are assigning this to yourself because you are having a good time. Now the thing is that you're going to be looking perhaps at live flowers, not these, because these I brought so that I can show you the parts of a flower. The bluets, in my case, um, we're just, I mean, it was a, a very dull day. It was sunny and, and not so warm, but in the middle of this trail was a bluet. And I thought, this is really odd, and it's uh, in December. And I've seen them on New Year's Day, too. So I said, oh, I've got to sketch this. It was a little too cold to sit down, so I photographed. And I came up with this. So I can work with that, one flower. And now I want to show you how to transfer this onto a sketch and then a painting. But before we do that, I'd like to talk a little bit about what's a flower. Usually when you think about a flower to paint, you might think sunflower, and they are amazing, or a daisy. But if you look a little bit more closely at these really early spring flowers, they will look quite different. They all have the same botanical parts, but they might be sort of hidden from you. And, uh, but I want you to be aware of what the flowers have. Okay, why, what's a flower for anyway? The color, the smell, is to attract insects, birds, hummingbirds, moths, butterflies, so that the two important parts of the flower, which are the reproductive structures, can then uh, somehow get together the flower is fertilized by the pollinator, and then uh, the seeds are formed. So let's take a look at one of these tulips, which you won't find in Shenandoah except today. Okay, um, so this is the, a tulip, and most flowers have, um, flowers that you'll notice, have petals of color, and they have leaves. Well, let's take a look at the leaf. Can you see how the leaves are almost like an arrow? And they have the veins that you can see here, and if you look at the other side, sometimes you can see them better. Uh, the leaves <coughs> being um, straight and with parallel veins kind of gives you the clue that it's in a special group of flowers that are called monocots. But let's look inside the flower here. So often you'll find that the flower has something on the outside called sepals, and that protects the flower in bud. Um, and tulips don't happen to have that. But they have the next layer, which are these colorful petals. And let's just, I'm going to take them off. I know, I hate doing this, but i got to show you these things. Now, as I take them off, I want you to acknowledge how many petals there are. And interesting, every flower is different. And look, we have this one that almost looks like 
a sepal. I found that quite interesting. Okay, so well, let's just put that one over here. So we have six petals. We have parallel veins, which means it's a monocot. So all the characteristics of the plant uh, will be in multiples of threes or sixes. So even these little jobbies right here. So I'm going to take off one and two, three. And you probably can anticipate that there's going to be six because there were six petals. Doesn't always happen, but that way. Okay, so what we have left, these are, these are the stamens that in a mature plant would produce this um, dust-like pollen. And that is what is the male part of the reproductive uh, story. And then what I have right here is the, the other part, the business part, which is called the pistil. On the top is where the, um, the, the, the pollen from the stamens would land. And then down at the bottom is the ovary. This whole thing is called a pistil. So if we later in the, uh, the growing season were able to look inside here, you'd see three or six chambers. You see at the top has three parts to it. So the fact that it has multiples of threes and sixes kind of helps you be anticipating what to look for later on. I want you to make sure you notice that the veins on this, this leaf are parallel to each other. Even though they do this, they're doing it together. <laughs> this leaf, on the other hand, looks like the palm of your hand. And so this is indicative of not a monocot, but of a dicot, which has different multiples of flower parts, more fours and fives in multiples, like the daisies. So whenever you're looking at your plant, make sure that you not only look at the flower, but look at the leaves too. So this is called palmate veination. And then this is another type. These are three basic types of, of veination just like we talked about the flower parts. So this one, if you flip it over, and often you can see more about veination if you flip the leaf over, you can see that it has with side veins, kind of like a feather is. And of course, this is called um, pinnate. So we've got parallel, palmate, pinnate. So just look for those details whenever you're um, looking and make sure that you don't put uh, say five petals on something that only should have four. I want you to look a little bit at some pictures. Uh, these are some spring wildflowers too. And um, often as you look at a flower, it's going to not look exactly like the picture in the book. And uh, if you look at it face down, you can see all the stamens on this. And right in the middle is the pistil. But what if the wind moves a little bit and it goes like that? Then you've got to figure out, what do I want to um, illustrate? And then you notice, too, that the distance, if you do this, or if the plant is tilted, that the distance from the center out here is quite different than it is from here to here. And that's because of all the, the proportions, but also the perspective, which is can really... Um, mess with your mind a little bit, but it's fun because you're learning. And of course, right now, at least in this area, we have uh, the crocus in bloom. Mine are blue, and my goodness, the honeybees were busy yesterday. But you know that the crocus has six petals. It's therefore a monocot like the tulip, and the leaves are straight, veined, and so on. And it has three stamens and a pistil that is divided. But we know, too, that every petal is about the same size. But if you would look, if you're looking at this particular petal, that's five centimeters across, and it's five, four and a half this way. But if you look at this one, it's down to eight and a half. So the, the angle at which you are doing the plant really makes a difference to your final story. It will say more to the observer if you are more accurate with its 
grace, its position. So once again, you should be doing something that you like to do and that it happens to be uh, of a pleasure to you to go ahead and render that. I hope you enjoyed that. Stay tuned for future episodes of our watercolor workshop. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you will get notifications when there will be more episodes in the series on our Shenandoah National Park Spring Wildflower Celebration.